guys, welcome to another episode. We've literally just pulled up on the beach and already we are seeing birds and fish busting up bait everywhere. Now we're gonna be on this beach for the next 30 hours. We gotta catch some food for lunch and dinner, but of course, first things first, we gotta actually land one. I'm gonna get out there. Well, that's a good start. It's a much nicer fish, I think. Hey. Feels like a nice fish, this one. Oh, 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 oh check that out! We've got fire going there. Well, that is pretty darn cool. Did we just make a viral video? Have a go, man! The trip started out in standard fashion, dropping the tyre pressure before hitting the sand and heading down the beach to get a sense for what might be going on. The weather was clear with a light breeze and the swell was predicted to be dropping. You simply couldn't ask for better conditions. And to top it off, I barely made it more than one kilometre down the beach before I found the first sign of fish life for the trip. Time to have a cast. Right, there's a massive amount of birds out here, but they're too far out. But I've seen a couple just diving in the gutter here, so they're going to be our target if we can get that far. It always looks a lot closer when you're in the car and then you get out there and you realise you're 100 metres short. But we'll let fly and see how we go. Oh, you can get out the back there. It's true. After the first 10 casts didn't draw a single strike, we decided to send the drone out to get a better look at what all the commotion was about. Just can't get out far enough. There is birds galore. You can see fish into them, but they're just out past the back bank and about probably 60 or 70 meters short with the old cast. 
just when you need a rocket launcher or something like that. Anyway, we'll find some closer in ones. But not before a little bait gathering side quest. If the tailor weren't going to play ball, I wanted to keep my options open. I just thought I'd quickly stop and grab some bait for the rest of the day, so I just got a little burly, burly bomb here trying to get some worms. I haven't actually seen a worm yet, but I have found some pippies. They seem to be pretty prevalent at the moment. Now, I like to let the purple ones go. A uh, Aboriginal gentleman told me that these are the actual female ones. So I let those ones go, they can breed. And Grab the uh, the males, a bit like mud crabs. I'm surprised there's no worms here. It's a beautiful looking bank. At least we got one bait source. Obviously for Taylor, I've got a few slab uh, flesh baits in the car there. Look at that, easy pickings, just shuffling along. Uh, Smally, there we go. I'm chucking them in there, that's what I've collected so far. Pretty easy going on the old pips. No sign of the worms. That'll do, let's go fishing. With some fresh bait acquired, it was back in the car and gutter and bait ball hunting once again. The dawn bite would be well and truly over, but a big patch of bait would definitely help keep them chewing as the sun got higher in the sky. Well, that's what we're looking for at the moment. There's a big patch of birds and they're dive bombing schools of bait. Now when you first get down to a beach, it's always exciting, but you've, you've always got to find what's going on, what's happening on that particular time, because you never know until you get down here. And uh, our target species for this trip, you've got tailor, you've got dart, and you've got uh, whiting, I'd say. And it looks like there's plenty of bird life, plenty of bait getting busted up. It's a little far out, but there's some in this little bank here which we might be able to have a crack on. And I'd say, I reckon they're tailor. Which if we can get a few times, oh, massive amount of birds out in the back. It's all happening, it's all happening. I'm excited. But if we can get a few tailor, then we've got an awesome lunch and dinner lined up. Um, but less talk, let's go get them. Should turn the car off first. All right, these birds are a bit close up. Hopefully. Yeah, they look it. Definitely some interest in the shore dump here. Just two or three tailor early on. Maybe a couple of dart later in the day would be absolute game changing. There's action here though. It does feel a bit closer. And good white water coming through the gutter too. Swell's still up a bit. <sighs> Yeah, there's definitely birds working in this gutter. Just need some tailor in there, and not just a school of bait. But yet again, my 40 gram night lure remained untouched cast after cast. I will admit, seeing this much life without success was getting a little bit frustrating. There's not much else you can do apart from get back in the car and move to the next likely looking gutter. You're bound to run into something sooner or later. Well, fingers crossed. Don't mind the look of this. Nice close in gutter, gets out over there, can access all this foam here, probably the best looking bit of 
tailor water for right now that I've seen so far. I bet you there'd be a dart in there as well. Which I might even try my luck at shortly. Well, that's a good start. That is a good start. What do we got? It's not big, whatever it is. And this is our first hookup of the trip. It could be a dart, you know. It could be a fair hook dart, but with a bit of luck, it's a tailor. And we get our first tail of the trip. No visual on it yet. Gonna do the old walk back. Should be able to see him in the wave here. Because a tailor, I'd think he'd be jumping by now. I'm gonna try and run him up anyway. Let's play it as if it is a tailor. What do we got? It is a tailor! All right! Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. We have the first tailor of the trip now. This guy is gonna have to get measured. I will admit that straight away. It is not a big tailor by any stretch. But they're a schooling fish, so where there's one, there should be more. And we landed it. We usually have a pretty bad habit of uh, these guys jumping off on us, but we landed this guy. 40 gram night jig did the damage. First cast in this beautiful looking gutter. I think we might park up here and see if we can catch some lunch. I'm gonna go get the measure though, put him on it, and uh, hopefully this guy will be an ingredient for later on today. Well, that tide is coming up pretty quick. Might have to move the car soon. Now, we don't have to get there by much. 35 on the nose is a win. Oh, yes! So, 35 centimetres is legal here in Queensland. That guy, just. Just, just, just. That's a keeper on the board. Just need a couple more. And uh, that's taken all the pressure off. Wouldn't mind one for bait as well. Lovely. Now, guys. Talked about it before. What I like to do with all my fish is bleed them and uh, before, I, uh, before I get them ready to eating, I brain spike them here, bleed them there. But this guy will be getting both of those treatments and away we go. Well, surely if there's one, there's got to be two. It's a beautiful looking gutter. That foam's coming all the way in. That guy ate it as soon as it hit the water. So it must be sitting right on that drop off. So hopefully he's got a few friends. There's another one. Hopefully the next class up in size. Might be a bit of a surface. Oh no! The old jump and spit. Devastating. Well now that I've lost him, I can say it was definitely a better fish. It was massive. Unfortunately, another 30 minutes of casting that same gutter never produced another hit. In fact, neither did any of the other gutters I spun down the beach for the next hour or so after that. It was time to pivot sideways and take a gamble. Righto ladies and gents, bit of an update for you. We've still only got this one tailor on the board and uh we dropped another one and haven't really had any other hits we've been pretty well the whole length of the beach we've spun a heap of gutters put in a heap of casts not a great deal going on plenty of bird activity but it's all too far out and i've decided we're gonna park up for lunch i'm gonna chuck a bait out and uh put it in the rod holder and see if we can't drum one up that way now the problem i have is i do have 
some frozen bait that I bought with me. I've got some bonito, I've got some garfish, um, and a few other odds and ends, which are great tailor bait, but I've always been a big lover of fresh bait. The problem being is we only have one of these and I was planning on putting it at lunch. So, bit of a gamble, but I am gonna take a couple of strips of this guy and launch it out. Um, inspired by the great Tim Naki, I will be risking it all here in the hope of a, a bigger catch. Um, but yeah, we'll still have one side left for a feed and hopefully we can drum up some more, but I'm just gonna knock a couple of strips off. I'm just gonna use the thinnest part because yeah, this is our only food so far. The old one tailor. I'm hoping we're gonna catch more. That is always the plan. But if we don't, I don't want the uh I don't want it to completely stitch us up. I do have a couple of pippies there, can always eat the pippies. But some tailor and maybe even a dart or two. Actually some dart would be red hot for the uh the lunch I have in mind. I haven't tried to chase one yet. I haven't really seen any in waves either. But I think in the meantime, I'm just going to lop two little strips off like that. It's not a big bait, but I should be able to cast it a long way. And it should be good enough to lure in any chopper that's uh, kicking around. And hopefully we can put a few more on the board. Turn this one into more. That's what gambling is, isn't it? You reinvest, you reinvest, and you become a millionaire. It's dead simple and consistent as gravity. We'll see how we go. <laughs> So <laughs> what are you trying for? Uh, trying to get a tail. Yeah. I mean, no, I got one on the spin and dropped another one, and that's about it. So. One out of here. Uh, one out of here. Yeah, one. Yeah, both out of here. Yeah. But um. Yeah, that's it. There's plenty of birds, they're but they're coming all. Coming and going with the, with the bait fish. Yeah. See the bait fish are moving in schools. Yeah. Oh, we've seen them. Oh no, the other day, a couple of days, that was just birds just galore. The bait fish were launching themselves on the beach. <laughs> yeah. Did you get a few that day? No, they're only small. Oh, right. All small, totally small. Yeah, right, eh? Uh, that's no good. No, that's, not the, that's not the report I was hoping for. No, no. I might go for a look there, Savo, because, yeah, we're trying to figure out what, what to do tonight, have a soak somewhere, and yeah. only got the one night. Yeah. Got to make the most of it. Hmm. No worries, Jimmy. Easy, appreciate the info. Anyways, enough chatting and back to fishing. We'll leave that one there. See if we can't drum up something that way. The old set and forget. Fingers crossed. Our lunch is riding on this. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and catch a dart too. See if we can't catch something to eat that way. Got to try all the bases. Got one. Well, I did not even know. I did not even know I had him on. There we go. The gamble has paid off. Again, only a little chopper. He'll have to get the measure, but, oh. Something might have had a go at him. Might be bigger fish out there. Taylor number two, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Did not know I had this one on. That's all right. 
we got him. He might just go like the other one, but hey, we're getting there. We're getting there. Just under, so he can go back. After sending another bait into the zone, it was back to the waiting game. I seem to be doing a lot of that this trip. The fish were definitely keen to make me work for it. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw the rod get hit while I was getting something out of the car. Well, the rod's just gone off. And this feels like a better fish. So we might have our dinner. Or it's, it's a much nicer fish, I think. There might even be a touch of drag going on. He's running down the beach. Stay in, please, hooks. Please be a tailor. If this is a tailor, it's gonna be a cracker. Might be a little shark or something. Either way. He's coming back. It is, it's a little shark. Well, Someone say fish nuggets? There he is! Little sharky! Not the big tailor, but he is edible and he's coming with us regardless. These guys make awesome fish nuggets, which we may dine on later. We've got one tailor for lunch and we can have this guy uh, when we have our other meal. I'm not disappointed about that. That's a good eating size. Whoa. Had, a bit of, had a bit of go about him. That's him. Not a uh, big shark by any stretch, but great eating size. A little bit of fun, took a little bit of drag. You beauty. There's, uh, there's dinner sorted. Nah. To keep the shark in the best possible condition, remove the heads, guts, and fins before putting on the ice. Righto, ladies and gents, we're at that time of the day where not a great deal is happening. It's about lunchtime, there's not much going on. I still have that rod out behind me there. So I thought I might whip up a bit of a feed. We're gonna make up a bit of a ceviche. It's a firm favorite of mine. And it's a nice simple one. We're gonna start it off with the old avocado. I reckon about half a red onion will do it. In we go. A few small tomatoes, these guys here, they're called berry tomatoes or something along those lines. Whack them in half. Bang down. Hey? Bang down. <laughs> there you go. Say again. Beach permit. Actually. Did we just make a viral video? Oh my god, the rain just stopped us. <laughs> now, a bit of a secret ingredient. These are kefalarum leaves. This is a Chef Julian secret. The leaves are actually from my other neighbour, so cheers Gareth. Now, you want to cut them up nice and fine. 
And last but not least, we've got our tailor. Now I'm gonna leave the scales on because I will be skinning this fish. That's a one filly. That's filly number two. We're gonna cut this guy up. Now, grab yourself a couple of limes. As we all know, the lime juice and lemon juice starts to cook the fish. So we're gonna let that sit for about a minute or two. While we're doing that, we're gonna add one of these little guys. Now, the chili is very much to taste, because you still want a little bit of a nose clearing chili effect, but you don't want to blow your head off. Right, right, chili, chuck it in. Now we add the fish. We give it all a big mix eat. That's what we're dealing with. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there is only one known uh, serving method for ceviche, and that is, well, just a plain corn chip. I don't know what a tortilla round is. I don't know how it's different from a corn chip, but They say you eat with your eyes, and I reckon we're onto a bit of a winner here. Freshly caught ceviche. Beautiful day. I think we're doing all right. Cheers to you if you're having a beer while watching this. Cameraman, that one's for you. Let's get stuck in. Unfortunately, there were no more bites on the baits or strikes on the lures after lunch. Personally, I blame that jet ski. So we packed up and made another move to a likely looking area. It was as good a spot as any to start the afternoon session. I figured we'd give it an hour or so, and if nothing happened, we'd start fishing our way back up the beach until we found them. Had a nice little lunch there, uh, packed up and we've had a bit of a move. We've moved down the uh, southern end of the island in the hopes of finding a few more fish. Got an interesting beach formation here, a bit of white water. Just giving it a try. The afternoon is starting to be upon us. So just in the process of uh, trying to find somewhere where we're gonna set up for that dusk bite. Got a line out at the moment, gonna rig up another rod and get that out as well. Um, make, maybe chuck a lure around. Just get the feel for this spot. And if it's uh, no good, then we'll start working our way back up the island until we can uh, find somewhere it's hopefully going to produce us a few fish. But it looks nice here. I can't see why something wouldn't be cruising through. We shall soon see. Sure enough, I barely even made it back to the car before I saw the rod get bit. That was first bait. That is a good sign. That's a oh no, don't do that. We almost had a tangle. Everybody calm down. It's just rigging up that second rod and this guy came along. He's not a big tailor by any means. He's probably only maybe just scraping onto the 40 centimeter mark. But he's a good start for this time of the Arvo. That bait's only been in the water for oh, five minutes max. Got clunked. Game on, we are on the board. All right, now the move here is I'm gonna fish one in the holder and I'm just gonna rig up my second rod and fish that in the hand, the Alvi. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna fish a bit further down. 
and hopefully be alternating between the two for when these fish come through and just belt everything. Give this guy a wash and get him in the bag. fish within the first, what, five minutes and not another bite since. What's going on today? Yep, there's a little tailor on here. Must have eaten it and run towards me. It's a bit better that one. Oh, up we go. In the afternoon light, we're starting to put a couple on the board. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Taking a liking to a bit of a slab bait there. Gangs in the mouth. Thanks for coming, we have had a bit of action recently. They're just kind of coming through ones and twos. That's a nice fish, that's probably the fish of the day. Maybe 45 centimeters, maybe 46. Nice solid fish, hopefully they keep on getting bigger. That'd be nice. That's why they call them chopper tailor. Oh, have a go at those teeth. Make short work of a finger, a bait fish, or any leader they get their, their choppers around. Makes me wonder why I wasn't using my pliers in the first place. Excellent. He's coming with us, that one. Beautiful fish. Got him. There'd been a tailor out there playing with me. He'd been playing with me. Missed him a couple of times already. Don't want to jinx myself here. Finally got the hooks into him.
Here he comes. Oh. Yep, and we're just getting bit on this other rod too. Well, they might be coming on the chew. Just missed that one. The old unattended rod. Doesn't hook as many as you'd like. This guy, he's a bit small anyway. I'll let him go. As the sun began to dip below the horizon, known as golden hour amongst anglers, the fish really started to chew. In fact, even the kangaroos were out feeding. Time to make up for the lack of fish earlier. <clears throat> this feels like a better fish. Feels like a much better fish. The old typical tailor bite, that one. The old pick it up and run with you. And you feel absolutely nothing. Oh, little jump there. There he is, jumping around. I don't think he's too much better. Oh, there he is. Up you come, mate. Up you come. That's a better fish. Much better fish. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are working for them. There is no doubt about that. But we're finally putting a few on the board. Try not to get a hook in myself here. It's too early in the season for that. There you go. Bit of sand on him. But dusk. And a beautiful tailor. Doesn't get too much better than that. Except maybe if this rod goes off and we get two. Wishful thinking. That's all right. That's another one. We've got three beautiful fish for a feed now. Probably don't need too many more, to be honest. That's, um, there's a great bit of meat in both of those. Might just do a bit of sport fishing here, a bit of trophy hunting. Lovely fish. Put another one on. Bit of a dust bite going on here. 
Oh, I still got him. There he is. Lovely. Another nice fish. Beautiful. It's all starting to happen now. Just watching that rod. Lovely. Now I know I harp on about how good tailor fishing is, but when you get to see sunsets like this, with your toes in the sand, a rod in hand, and catching a few fish, it's not too difficult to guess why it's so addictive. Got him. Oh, there he is. He felt pretty solid when I hit him, but I think he's just that same, better, just a nice chopper. I lose him. I saw lost him. He jumped him off. Huh. Lucky bugger. He gets that one for free, he does. Oh, that one's better again. And we're just fishing into the night here. Ah, it's a lovely fish. He'd probably be Getting up towards the 50 centimetre mark. Oh, of course. Of course. Grab both hooks. That'll be fun. In the back way. Whoa. Sorry, fella. It's his lucky day. We've got plenty for a feed. He can go back. And we're on again. Release one, straight into another. Just as that sun's gone down there. Really having a bit of a chew now. This is a go. This is what we like to do. Battle all day. And it all happens in about an hour and a half, just on dusk. Where is this one? Oh, it's coming up in this wave. There he is. Oh, oh, ho, ho, ho. check that out. Check that out. Well, I can honestly say, ladies and gentlemen, I have never done that. The old double banger. There must be a few of them out there now. That's only a two gang as well. That's two tailor on a two gang. It doesn't get too much better than that. Let's have a little look-see. <laughs> How good is that? Two at a time. That's efficient. One. Two. Time for a double release. Thanks guys. Two at a time. Well, that is pretty darn cool. Two at a time. Got to get back out there now. 
feels like a nice fish, this one. Oh. He's having a go. Just, uh, just went quiet for a bit. Still got him. He's coming up with a wave here. one beautiful they're uh they're definitely getting bigger and bigger that's for sure i uh i'm having a good time some good old-fashioned tailor fishing now we did have to work for it like i said earlier in the day but this is definitely making up for it might have another couple of casts see if we can't find one more big one and then it might be time for a cheeky beer set up camp and uh get a bit of grub in us i think well guys, we are gonna call it a little afternoon there. I don't know how many fish we caught, probably in that 10 to 15 range. No massive ones, but some really nice quality amongst them and certainly a lot better than what we caught for the whole entirety of the day. But we've gotta go, the tide is coming up, so we're gonna find some camp and cook some tucker. Welcome to the Taylor camp. We've got a bit of a fire going there, which we're about to start. A bit of cooking on, production table, all sorts, all sorts of meals going down there. Um, obviously the car here. Jasper bought the whole Taj Mahal. Hang on, look at that. It's meant to be packing light. <laughs> and I got the old swaggle puss, the old faithful, served me well in Cape York, but uh, it'll get a run here tonight. Now I just want to give a quick shout out, you guys who are going to be doing a bit of beach fishing and all that sort of stuff, you're going to need some good quality lighting and I've been lucky enough to be associated with the guys from Nebo for quite some time now and uh, been running a few of the new products. Check this out, the Omni 2K, it's a work light. We've been lighting up the whole campsite with that. Just hang it off a tree. Thanks for coming. Now I've got the Galileo or Galileo, whatever you like to call it, in the swag there. I also keep that in the back of the car when we're night fishing because you can set the whole thing to red light so it doesn't blow out your night vision um, and you can just leave it in the back of your car so other vehicles can see your car. Um, and you can go and rig up and get new bait, all that sort of stuff. On the head, I've got the old Einstein Flex uh, 1500. Now, again, cracking fishing light. Reason being is you can go straight to the red light setting. Now, for me, that's priceless because I can re-rig, re-bait, all that sort of stuff uh, without blowing your night vision. And then if you want to give it the heat, boom, away you go. Anyway, there's a little camp tour. We've got a pretty specky view which we'll show in the morning but we've got some dinner to make. I was going to add some fish to my noodles but I've since lost made of motivation to do uh, filleting so I'm just going the normal noodles. I'm going the uh, El Cheapo route and uh, but I am going to cook a bit of naan bread which is a delightful little touch. Anyways, that's camp. Well, legends, I really hope you enjoyed getting back on the beach with me. I know I love filming these episodes and I hope you love watching them. Make sure you tune in next week for the second half where we wake up in the morning and get stuck right into some more fish. But it's a little bit different, so make sure you set your alarms and check it out. Now, if you'd like to support the channel, make sure you head over to my website, sammyhitskyfishing.com and grab yourself some merchandise. Heaps of stuff available there. Got hats, shirts, stickers, D-hookers, trolling rigs, all sorts of stuff. See if there's anything that tickles your fancy. Also, guys, if you did like this episode, make sure you do us a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, like the video, drop us a comment below. I would very much appreciate it. Once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky Fishing Adventure. Cheers. Did we just make a viral video? Oh my God, the ranger stopped us.